and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube as well. For our first deck of the day, this is going to be Simic Semi Flash. That's what I'm calling this one. This is a donation deck. This is a viewer submitted deck here, and it's kind of like Simic Flash, how we have um, some parts of, of Flash with uh, you know, like Once Upon a Time, Brazen Borrower, Night Pack Ambusher, Frilled Mystic, Wildborn Preserver. You know, so we have some Flash elements, but then we also just have some strength of um, aggressive Simic decks with Pelt Collector, Paradise Druid, Questing Beast, and then of course Gilded Goose and Oko, which are just an incredible combination. To top it all off, there's a Nissa, there's a Krasis. Those are two awesome Simic cards, and we have um, a good old uh, Simic mid-range deck here. Um, but I guess before we go go on, I guess I should mention here real quick that I did just launch a Patreon site. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down below. It's just patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG. If you uh, enjoy my content and you'd like to help support the channel, also I'll be um, providing written content over there on Patreon um, as well as sideboard guides to my most popular decks over there as well. So go check it, that out. All right, but uh, that's what our deck's all about. Um, we're going to be playing a nice mid-range game here where we have some instant speed stuff. We have some um, regular sorcery speed good threats with like Oko and Questing Beast as well. And throw it together, and we got Simic Semi-Flash. All right, so we're going to go ahead and play this deck through a league. That's what we always do with our donation decks. We got two donation decks to kick the day off with today, and then we got two new brews for our Tuesday Brews Day stream after that. All right, so let's play a league. Traditional standard queue, pay our 1,000 gold, and let's see how this deck does. <clears throat> Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. The gifted sub to the Shaper. Thanks, Shaper. Welcome to the channel. All right, so we got one sub on the day. Here we go. All right, well, the picture looks pretty great to me. Yep. <laughs> we should probably move it down to 1080. Help stutter. Like, you know, we don't want the gameplay to stutter. <clears throat> Alright, so our, our, you know, it looks like we just only have a bunch of green mana here, but because of Paradise Druid, we got a little bit of blue, so not so bad. What's the best shock land, and why is it Breeding Pool? Because they keep on printing really good Simic cards everywhere. Yeah, so Zedalam, it should still take, even, yeah, you tried to, to reconnect your, your Twitch and your Discord. It'll still take, you know, maybe an hour for them to sync up. So, you know, you retry it, but still wait like an hour. Well, I mean... Is my opponent not doing anything? Am I disconnected? What's going on here? I, did, I do have some Kiwi. Alright, here we go. I'm going to put one of these forests back. I'm going to put Brazen Borrower back, but I like Brazen Borrower. Good game. Hello. They probably meant to say hello the first time and accidentally said good game. That happens. Mono red cavalcade. Oh, 
Oh no! Alright, so my opponent messed up there. They played their land from hand instead of Dwarven Mine. Well, I guess I guess this was going to come into play tapped, so maybe they didn't want it to come into play tapped. Um, yeah, the, the Aurelia Flyer, Fires deck is not a deck that I put together. You know, when I, when I say DD next to him, I probably didn't put it together. So, so that's a donation deck. Um, yeah, that's, and that deck in particular is a, is a deck from a viewer that has some suboptimal card choice and stuff, but wants me to, to play it, try it out, um, you know, see what we like, what we don't like, and recommend changes and stuff like that. So it's a little awkward having, you know, sorcery speed stuff to go with ambusher there, how we don't make a 3-3 three, three at end step, but playing questing beast is just the way to go. We should just play our questing beast. Chandra, you need more control. Just don't worry. I brought company. I'm just going to attack with these two. I could attack with Paradise Druid. And put my opponent down to two. Which normally, I, I normally I would be doing, but because Paradise Druid is our only blue source, I won't be attacking. Like if we had a blue land here, I would be attacking with the Paradise Druid. Like I don't care the way that we get to cast Petty Theft and Once Upon a Time. Really, all I cared about maybe playing was the Petty Theft. Okay. So I think that's like what we have, like these love struck beasts and everything. I think we're just like trying to go with it, like bigger green creatures. That's my guess here. Probably the same thing, you know, like with Wicked Wolf. Um, so we're gonna cut Frilled Mystic because we're bringing. We have all those other four drops that we're bringing in. Uh, maybe Brazen Borrower. Yeah, I think Brazen Borrower also because you know I just brought in other threes and fours. So I want to cut threes and fours. That looks good. This Brazen Borrower obviously isn't blocking anything. Um, yeah. We'll just go ahead and, and get rid of that. Oh, thanks, Jack. Well, welcome to the channel. Okay. Hey, track team. Day's going good. I was a, you know, get started just a, a tad bit late here. I was a little behind. Um, but we got a brand new Patreon set up now. So that's exciting. And 
And we got four new decks to play against. No blocks. So going with Paradise Droid here to be able to grow the Pelt Collector, turn it into a 2-2. Two -two. Um, no attack still. We just need to sit back on defense for a little bit. Because I'm not attacking with the Paradise Druid and with Jack missing a land drop there. We just need to play a little bit of defense. Question, doesn't the one copy of Krasis feel we very weird in the deck? It's like, do you want it or not? I guess. Actually, I mean, I really don't mind it, honestly. Because Krasis is the card that, like, in, like, the late game, it's absolutely amazing. And so, just to have, like, late, you know, also late game scenarios, you've gone through more of your deck, so there's a better chance that you'll draw a Krasis the longer the game is. As well. Um... I should have. I clicked OK. I, I meant to play this Love Struck Beast first to turn this thing into a 3 3, but oh well. Um, ah, perfect. Yep, absolutely. I will play that updated list instead, Jazz. Perfect. Um, so I'll just say no attacks. So anyway, so like the Krasis, is, it's like the kind of card that, you know, the deck maybe doesn't want to draw it early on and, you know, doesn't want to have a bunch of them. It's not really what the deck's about. So there's not a lot of Krasis, but there's there's just the one Krasis for um, times that, you know, times that the games go longer. You draw more of your deck, you maybe draw into the Krasis and you have like your extra mana and stuff and you can just cast your Krasis. So I think that makes sense to have one copy. I think that's the the type of card that if you're you know the if you want one ofs that is a good type of card to have a one of. So Jazz, so your Jeskai Aurelia Fires deck. Do you do you want me to play that in best of one? Like, is it a best of one deck or is it a best of three deck? It, I'm guessing it's a best of one deck for how the sideboard is. How you have how you have like these 15 cards in the sideboard. These aren't really cards for best of three for the sideboard. Like with you know you have your your Fae of Wishes. You just have like 15 Fae of Wishes cards. Okay, it's best of one? Okay. Cool. Yeah, sorry about that, Jack. Yep, just didn't draw any lands there. GG's, though. Okay. We're going to need a little bit more mana than that. Mulligan. Hmm.
I think it's either... I think I'm going to just put this Pelt Collector back, actually. I'm just going to do that. Cauldron Familiar. We're pretty familiar with that card after yesterday. We may find a goose. No goose. Um, there's not necessarily a specific deck that's best for best of ones. Um, yesterday, we played a, a Rakdos Sacrifice deck that, that I really liked. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you're, you're very new to, to Magic in general, so you probably want to play something a little more for straightforward, a little more linear. Um, on, on my YouTube channel that I just linked there, there's a playlist for best of one decks. And so you can kind of, you can kind of browse through those and see if there's ones that you like and play, you know, a couple of them we didn't do very well with. You can, you know, if you click on like the video for each one, if you go to the end, you can see like our record also. A couple of them we didn't do very good with, um, but, but others we did pretty well with. And also at the end of the video, I, I talk about the deck as well so you know you can kind of see like which ones i was higher on and so on so maybe maybe there's something there that um that you think you'll enjoy to play and um and that you know looks looks strong and everything like that so hopefully that helps there Gaze into my face and put on your true shape. And that is true. Um, in six days, we're going to have abandoned restricted announcement. So it is possible that formats change, that um, cards that are legal now are not going to be legal in six days. And so that's something to be cautious about as well. This Oko card looks pretty powerful. I, invite you I don't know if y'all have seen this card before. Oko Thief of Crowns. It looks pretty powerful. Alright, so we'll get the Nissa in play. So that next turn, you know, we can cast Once Upon a Time here also. Or then next turn I can have Questing Beast plus Ambusher. What does Oko do? Yeah, it says, you know, plus two, create a food token, plus, minus five, exchange control of some creatures, plus one, target player wins the game. So that's pretty strong. I mean, target player wins the game attached to a three mana card. All right, so it looks like they're going to kill my forest. Sack the familiar, bring it back. All 
So what, what does the 6-mana Oko do? I haven't really looked at 6-mana Oko. Yeah, it's a couple of times y'all have said that 6-mana Oko looks pretty cool for standard. Yeah, I know it costs twice as much as Oko. The land shall conquer you. into my face and put on your true shape. Hey, Rev Daddy, it's going good. Going real good. Yeah, it's always, like, <sighs> they do design some cards to be very powerful, but, you know, that is on purpose with um, wanting, you know, they always do want people to be excited about new set and, and you know, buy new cards and, and things like that. If, if, you know, like, they make a set that just doesn't have good cards in it, People won't really buy that set. They'll just continue to play the other cards that they have. And of course, it is about you know selling cards. By playing Krasis, I don't get, you know, I was debating whether or not to play Krasis here, because I don't get a, um, surely you must be famished. The land fights for us. I don't get a wolf from the ambusher. All right, perfect, Zerf. Nice. So the Grixis, yeah, the Grixis midrange, right? Like with, did that one have, um, oh, I guess I could have had, I guess I could have had lethal there by bouncing that thing. Oh, well. Um, was that the one like with, did it have Rotting Regisaur? Was it Rotting Regisaur in Royal Scions? I know it had, you know, like Knight of the Ebon Legion, Royal Scions, like that kind of stuff. Okay, Rotting Regisaur in there too. Okay, perfect. I should probably play that that deck again tomorrow during the 12-hour stream. I know I'm going to be playing... I know tomorrow I'm going to be playing the Teamer, um, Teamer Walkers deck again. And I'm going to play Elemental Arcbow. So, so I know I have those two up on the docket. I know I have, I have a donation deck to get to also. Um... Which is Demir Mill. That's the donation deck for tomorrow. But yeah, we're doing 12 hour streams, so we're doing seven decks. So I know those are three. So yeah, Grixis Midrange seems like a fun deck to play. No, that is that is a good point. That um, if you make cards too good, and then that 
people make people not want to play the game, then it's hard to sell cards if people don't want to play the game. It's a very fair point there. Hmm. Am I just doing the same thing I did against Red? I don't want the Beast, but I, I want the other Ambusher and I want the Wicked Wolves. I think I'm going to take out Nyssa. And then if I don't have Nyssa, do we take out Krasis? 23 land. This is so many fours. This has to be too many fours. Hey, Kalua King. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully the Esper Alayla deck does well for us. Um, no, so like these these first two decks are not. Um, they are not my decks. Um, QQ, when am I doing your donation deck? Probably Friday. But I, I guess... Let's see, I could definitely do it. I guess I could, I could do it tomorrow. You know, I'm not streaming Thursday. Shock. Probably Murderous Rider. Or, yeah, Bedevil. Yeah, so basically, you can let me know, QQ, if you have a, a day that works better for you. Had a kiwi seed in my mouth there. Um, but I know it's, it's like another Esper deck. We've been doing a lot of Demir and Esper, and I got another Demir deck tomorrow. So I think Friday may work a little better. Hmm. Okay, cool. So I just don't play anything. I get a 3-3. I'm just going to do that. Ambusher, no. All right, so I can. I can just play other stuff for a little bit now. I don't really want to trade my Wildborn Preserver for Foulmire Knight, but I guess I guess that means I'll have to Wicked, you know, trade Wicked Wolf for Foulmire Knight.
unless we draw something else, you know, like right now, that's those are my options. <laughs> yeah, um, just because Witch's Oven just combos really well with Cauldron Familiar and has some other good combo potential as well here with uh, cards like Mayhem Devil and everything. All right, gonna fight the Mayhem Devil. So they have to use the Mayhem Devil's trigger first. know they use the extra damage on the questing beast so we know not to attack with the questing beast to trade with midnight reaper Alright, so as of now, they don't have a blocker for Questing Beast for next turn. But of course, that thing's gonna gain a lot of life. That with the oven. This wild board preserver keeps on getting so getting bigger, but it just doesn't get through this foul mire night yet. I'm, I'm not gonna play the goose, we'll just Get a wolf, three, six, seven, eight. Such a big fox. Yeah, Wildborn Colossus. It's a 1919 over here. It's so big. Basically, if I attack with these other two creatures, these two trade for Judith and Falmire Knight. Because uh, you only put the Falmire Knight in front of there, Judith in front of here, they get the two triggers. You know, do them both to the ambusher. <clears throat> this puts the, the opponent still just goes to one here. I'll just make another 3-3. Three, three. Oh, never mind. They're going to three. They're sacking. So 
for sacking the food. Instead of, you know, they could have replayed the Cauldron Familiar and gone to one. Okay. 2 0. Oh. Our deck looks pretty good against aggro with just a pile of questing beasts and night pack ambushers. Those two cards look pretty good against the smaller aggro decks right now. So that's what we've seen so far. All right, here we go. Read Questing Beast? It's too many words. If I tried to read Questing Beast, we'd be here all night. Take up the whole the whole stream trying to read that card. Okay, let's get the goose in play. I don't want another goose. This gives me a chance just to get the temple in play. Also, hey, what's up, Spanky? Thanks so much for that resub. Eleven months now. That is amazing. Thank you so much, there, Spanky. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this this deck definitely does feel solid. It's Does it have anything that's not a rare in the deck? I guess Paradise Druid. Oh, and Frilled Mystic. Alright, Paradise Druid and Frilled Mystic. <laughs> and Basic Lands. That's it. The thing is, is especially my hand is not very good against a sweeper. You know, like bouncing a grazer isn't anything to write home about. Hey, Morgan. Thanks for joining the Patreon today. Alright, Krasis. Not the best draws there. Land to land. The Tireless Pilgrim. Not a bad card. Not a bad card at all. Um, don't really know how we're supposed to win this. So I got six mana to work with.
I want to make that thing a 3-3 as far as blocking goes. Yeah, could have like two 2-2s two by playing the Pelt Collector first. Now I'm holding up Once Upon a Time or the Brazen Borrower. It's not a deal. So basically I need to hopefully hit Frilled Mystic here. I don't want to do that first though and show them Frilled Mystic. All right, once upon a time, hit Frilled Mystic. They have wishes. Bleh. <laughs> Not ideal equals GG. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're in a very terrible spot. Here. I'm gonna grab planar cleansing. Nothing better to grab than that. So I did want to play the Pell Collector also into the Planar Cleansing, but maybe I should have. Can't get through Fae of Wishes. Can't get through these two twos. All they need to do is draw a basic island like they did last turn, and that just <laughs> is too devastating. Or draw Golos. That's pretty good, too. So, look at the sideboard. Definitely the, the plan's got to be like the four disdainful strokes here. Don't think I want Mystical Dispute. I definitely want Ambusher as a way to have a threat that can you know, take over by itself and, you know, we don't need to, like, put a lot of threats out there kind of thing. Don't want to play Nissa whatsoever for this matchup. The Brazen Barber really didn't look that great. I mean, it's a 3-1 that gets to attack, but against Fae of Wishes, that's not, you know, like, that's nothing to that we really care about. And, like, they don't really have things to balance except for just a zombie. Um, I 
I've got Pill Collector. I want to get rid of things that are not very good against sweepers. Wicked Wolf can be okay against sweepers with it um, making a food token. Thought about taking out Paradise Druid instead of um, instead of the one drop. But I think that like with our, our curve pretty high, with us wanting the ability to play stuff and hold up to Stainful Stroke, I think that having all the mana creatures is essential. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Field of the Dead and Golos, like, on their own, like, even just, like, those two cards isn't really necessarily, like, the worst thing. It's just how good they've been making all these ramp cards. It's, you know, a Boreal Grazer. Having this card, you know, like, this slowed me down quite a bit last game. Having Growth Spiral. Growth Spiral is incredibly good for, like, what it does. Like, it's, it's really efficient. You know, instant speed, playing another land... Drawing a card, the land doesn't even come to play tapped. It's, it's such a good card. And it's kind of it's kind of just everything put together. And then it's it was a very easy problem to see coming. as well, and they just didn't print anything in Throne of Eldraine, which was baffling. Oh, there's no hate in Throne of Eldraine at all. Alright, so hopefully... We just get to Disdainful Stroke. Okay. Disdainful Stroke is a really nice counter, though, for this deck. Play some we'll play the Mystical Disputes. Yeah, going first is really nice, too. E. I mean, it's just turn four Questing Beast. You can do better than that. All right, this hand does better than that. I'm going to actually get rid of the Goose. It's like the goose is like a, a mana source that we only get to use once. I guess I could have shocked in there. Man, I need a I need another land, but this is a lot of spells that are not lands that we're putting down to the bottom. That is kind of risky. Just you know, it was 
If we had a different land that wasn't Temple, you know, Temple comes into play tapped. I don't want a tap land this next turn. Turns out it wasn't risky whatsoever. Turns out not risky at all. Let's play the one they know about. Playing Oko. I guess I should have attacked with Paradise Druid right there, because I'm only going to be able to have either Ambusher or just Ample Stroke, and not both. Should have attacked with Paradise Druid. Ugh, boo. Right on schedule. No, I am not making this up as I go. Really should have seen that coming. They're missing land drops, so that's good. So instead of instead of best of one one day Monday, you should go mono Monday. Four eight. 10, 13. Puts them down to 1. Walk with me. Sing with me. I will in, I think, a little merriment is in order. Alright, so I'm going this route so that even if they have, like, Sweeper plus Veil of Summer they're dead because then we have the haste creature with Oko and questing beast. I think, I think I like just the best, best of one day Monday right now. But yeah, we'll see. A couple of the, the best of one videos didn't do the best. Um, on for the YouTube channel. So, you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that that definitely looked pretty impressive for uh, being able to have all those counter spells and everything, and then just also really good threats like where um, you know, like Simic Flash has like a couple of threats that kind of get get overpowered by zombies but having cards like Oko and Questing Beast that looked pretty nice that looked pretty nice yeah Disdainful Stroke has been awesome for sure um I kind of want to keep. Uh, 
Yes, I am planning on playing Elemental Arc Boat tomorrow. Yep. That's certainly part of the plan. Yeah, like, I mean, I already have, so, I like the two days that we have. So we have, um, best of one day Monday, and then Tuesday, Bruce Day, which the Demir, Mir Demir Mirror, and Esper Alayla decks that we're going to play later, those are part of, those are going to be part of our Tuesday, Bruce Day stream for today. And then we have the Sunday matinee streams, where I stream two hours early. Don't have anything yet for the other days. All right, getting Risen Reef out of here. So they get Nissa first. They probably have better things to follow up this Nissa than what I got as well. You know, they have like Krasis, for example. Nature's true power. And of course theirs get to, gets to attack mine. <clears throat> but if they you know if they do have crisis, I want to get a forest out of there. So I want to make this attack and see if they, they block and get rid of their forest. Because of course the, the forests are double lands here. No lands. 0 for 5. So we got Cavalier, Oko. Rise, my elemental friend. If I don't block the Pelt Collector, it can be a 4-4 next turn. Then obviously it's going to be more difficult to ultimate Nyssa. Endure. Thing is, they just don't need to. So many lands. They just don't need to attack this next turn. I like. I hope they do, but they don't need to. The land fights for us.
Okay, I'm probably sending the Gilded Goose in front of this Cavalier. I don't really like our chances in this game. Doing really good, Chain. Yeah, doing really good. All right, we'll kind of separate those. So those are our Tuesday Brewsday decks. We're doing the two donation decks first, and then two, the two Tuesday Brewsday decks. Um, yeah, so far, so yeah, this deck's looked pretty good so far. Uh, we're we're facing a Simic deck that's just going a lot bigger than us. Yeah, that happens. Um, I'm not going to really stop that Nessa from ultimating. I'm not going to stop this 8-8 Krasis that's drawing four cards. So this is going to be a, a tough matchup for us. We're going to have all these. We're definitely going to need to have all these counter spells in for sure. I don't know if we really need Questing Beast. Questing Beast is pretty, like it's, yeah, it's pretty rough against Doko. It's not, it's not really that great. These decks are definitely going bigger than Pelt Collector. I guess I should be playing Nissa on the play. Like, what do I want to bounce in their deck? I don't want to bounce Krasis. Don't want to bounce Cavalier Thorn. Don't want to bounce Risen Reef. Well, I guess I want to bounce, like, what, like Nyssa and Oko? Hmm. I don't really have anything else I want to take out, so I guess it's that. And then I then I need to take out either Nissa or Krasis, one of these two, or a Wildborn Preserver. I'll just cut a Preserver, I guess. Okay, let's see how this does. We're gonna try a lot more counter magic. Hope our opponent doesn't draw their Veil of Summers. All right, we're gonna ramp into something. Our deck doesn't have very many lands. Like we only have twenty-three, and so shouldn't be drawing too many more lands. Correct. Yeah, the, the Brazen Borrower can only bounce our opponent's cards. That's what I was, I was talking about my opponent's cards whenever I was, I was saying that. That is not good. I guess these are all good cards that to put... I guess those are good cards to put down to the bottom of the library, I guess. Besides the Yoko. I guess those are cards we don't mind going to the bottom. We're going to need to draw like, our counter magic, frilled mystics. Dang.
So, so we put two other lands down to the bottom. Oh my gosh. Need a mulligan more. This game's just over. <laughs> I even started. Once upon a time whiffed and our first few draw steps whiffed. Make some more food. Oko. All right, maybe the game's not over yet. Who's more foolish, the fool or the fool who rules them? <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. We'll turn Cavalier into a three-three. Redraw Oko. Now Oko doesn't need to take the three damage. Their plan may be to, to re counter Oko here. Not so bad for me though. Oko turned the Cavalier from you know being what it is into just a three three with no abilities and also traded with an Ether Gust and a Negate. But I guess it was it was kind of like two. I guess it was technically two Okos that did that because that was our draw step also. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, Krasis to the rescue. This is why we have a Krasis in the deck, for those y'all asking earlier. Sometimes you just draw six of your 23 lands. And Krasis comes to rescue you. <clears throat> okay, so we can Nissa and Ambusher and Ambusher next turn. That's awesome. We can do everything next turn. We can do everything. Yeah, Lovestruck Beast is used against aggro. You know, like against like your red decks and stuff like that. Like it's a you kinda treat it as like a three mana five five. There, it's a really good blocker against aggro. Um It's a good question. How does the Ambusher compare to Huntmaster of the Fells? Good question. They're pretty similar. I think Ambusher is more. I, th I think Ambusher is probably a little more powerful, but they're they're very similar. Three, four, five.
No counter, no counter, no counter. Alright, so we do not get to ambush her now. Witness the ties that bind us all. The land shall conquer you. Um I saw the Racto Sacrifice deck. Do you think Elite Headhunter is too bad for the deck? Yeah, with it being four mana. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Um, yeah, with it being four mana there like that. I don't know. So it just has... Oh, so you have to pay three mana and sacrifice? It's not just sacrifice. You have to pay three mana to activate its ability? Yeah, it's just... Okay, so yeah, it's too much mana. Yeah, not, not too interested in that card. I was just look, you know, reading that, and I thought it was just sacrifice, you know, like without any mana, and I was like, well, that's actually really good, but then you have to spend three mana? No. Um... Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought it was worth I thought we had like a lot of, of food generated and I thought that the one power toughness could be worth using that extra food there. Um I guess what what people want with Ether Gust is something against um you know, like there are there are definitely gruel decks, you know, like like people play gruel gruel haste and stuff like that and ether gust can slow them down but then it's it's just a slow down like mono red um you know slows down cards like nissa oko questing beast stuff like that i personally do not like ether gust but you know if you're playing a bigger simic deck and you need and you need help slowing down the aggressive decks because like they're going underneath you, that's what Ether Gust can do. It slows them down. I'm certain you're quite charmed to meet me. It's not poison. So it's a game you're interested in. Hey, Caesar. One bite, and all your cares are gone. Alright, so we got Oko out of here. And they're down to eight. You're too close minded. No, if you if I would attack the planeswalker it would just do the regular four damage. Questing Questing Beast just says that you you can attack the opponent. And then redirect, they're like you know that that whatever damage you do to the opponent also gets dealt to a planeswalker, but not um, if you do damage to a planeswalker, then it also does more damage to a planeswalker after that.
Open your heart to the magic that dances around you. All right, time to turn their creatures into three threes. Let's broaden your existence. No, Veil of Summer doesn't stop questing beast if you attack your opponent. Harness the elements. Surely you see the humor here. Through this land, we are all connected. Behold, nature's true power. Okay. All right, so bigger Simic deck again. We just had we had a really good aggressive hand there, um, but may not this may not go the best for us though. Um, so what we struggled with last game. We could just do the same thing we did last game. The thing is, we didn't draw any sideboard cards last game, so. It didn't work out very well because we didn't draw any sideboard cards, but maybe this time we will. We didn't draw anything but mana creatures, basically. So I took out, I, I did take out the Brazen Borrower. Maybe, maybe Brazen Borrower is worth it if they're going to be mass manipulation, you know, so I can bounce my, my own permanent back to me. And maybe taking out Questing Beast is wrong. Is Questing Beast better than Wicked Wolf? I feel like Questing Beast is really good if you get it that early like we did. But it's going to just trade with like two three threes. So Oko's going to make a whole bunch of 3-3s three all over the place. And that's all Questing Beast is going to do is trade with two of the 3-3s. Three three Alright, I'll play Quest I'll, I'll play it instead of Wicked Wolf. Sorry, my eye. Bother me just a little bit there. <sighs> okay, here we go. So we'll once upon a time see if we get an untapped green source for turn one goose. I'm not sure if we really need. Hmm, that's a bad draw. Wow. Hmm. I would like to have that card, but we need another land first, though. We're going to be playing Paradise on turn two, and then hopefully three. There we go. Three we'll have up. Uh, Ambusher and Mystic.
So, of course, my opponent knows about the Frilled Mystic. So we'll see how they want to play around it. They can have a 2-2. That's it. We have learned that Fril like you know, having Frilled Mystic, Night Pack, Ambush, or having those things turn three instead of turn four is even better. It's such a deadly combination there of Frilled Mystic and Night Pack Ambush, or you know, like I have Frilled Mystic. Revealed and so they play something that you know, they don't mind getting countered just play a 2-2 Well now I have a night pack ambusher in play and you have a 2-2 and then you know Now I can counter like your thing that whatever tries to deal with the ambusher and ambusher just snowballs <laughs> All right, so final boss time Here we go. Yep, it's Tuesday, Bruise Day. I think I should have a dash in there. We're, we got two donation decks that we're playing first, and then I got the two Tuesday, Bruise Day decks after that. So I got turn one Goose, turn two Oko, and then um, hey numbers, thanks. All right, so we got yeah turn one Goose, turn two two Oko, and then turn three. Which of these do I really want? Don't really want any of them. I guess I'm gonna just take the Crasis for later. I don't really want any of those for turn three. You know, like maybe the Paradise Druid with a Temple of Mystery or something. But with turn two Oko, we should be able to survive into a later part of the game. Where Krasis shines. This, okay, good. So this could be the is a is it flash deck though that we're playing against here. Surely you must be famished. Down, 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 down. Hmm. See ya. One bite, and all your I'm going to keep making more food gone. for the, the goose to have more mana. I don't really want to just turn that food into a 3-3, three, three, then my goose doesn't get to add mana. They're just not playing anything. This could get countered, because otherwise they have to just go to discard. So even, even if they're thinking that I don't really want to counter this... Gets copy, that's pretty nice. Yes, there's the link to the, the Patreon. Just started that up today. I'm gonna have written content up there and you know, do like Q and A's. Um, into my face and also put, put on your sideboard guides whenever we have successful decks. Like later on in the week, I'll have a sideboard guide for the Teamer Walkers deck up there. And I'll, I'm also planning on posting a little bit more. First post was just, you know, should Field of the Dead be banned? 
and it was a pretty quick post, but I'm going to be posting more about that topic and everything leading up to the 21st of October. But I like how I can make just quick posts on there. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm going to be playing the Affinity Forge deck tomorrow. Um, the Esper Al Alela deck that we're going to play later today is is just like the Affinity Forge. Um, you know, that's what I, I took the Affinity Forge and changed some stuff to make it an Alela deck. But... Um, so I can try out a couple of new, new cards with that deck because... I think the Affinity Forge deck is pretty close, but I wanted to try some new things with it. Nice. I have to say, your, your Patreon number seven. Awesome. We started the stream today with, with six. To we had six people join before I started the stream today, so there's number seven. Awesome. Thanks, I have to die. Ooh, number is your number eight. Awesome. We're getting there. Do you think there's room for a blue-black mill deck or mill in general? Maybe. I have a blue-black mill deck donation deck that I'm going to play tomorrow. Um, so, yeah. So, check that out tomorrow. Um, that's that's my donation deck for tomorrow is a blue-black mill. So, it'll be, it'll be interesting to try it out. You know, it's got a lot of the, the Throne of Eldraine blue-black mill cards. Um, so, it'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting trying that thing out and seeing how it does. All right, so we definitely want Mystical Disputes, and we want more ways to play Instant Speed against the Is It Flash. I don't think I really want Disdainful Stroke too much, though. I like how Pelt Collector's cheap, even though Pelt Collector dies to Shock. That second part isn't great. Um, schedule for tomorrow. I know I don't have, like, the... Yeah, so we're going to be doing like seven, usually like with 12 hour streams, that gets us to seven decks. Um, I'm going to be playing Teamer Walkers and Arcbow Elemental for sure. Probably Demir Affinity Forge as well. And then. And then, um, and then we have the donation deck with Demir Mill. So that's four. And then we'll kind of see what the other three. If you sub a gate land for a pain land, do you mean like a, a like you take out a guild? You, oh, you take out a shock land and you put in a guild gate? I think that's... It will... It will hurt the deck, but not by a, a, not by a ton, honestly. You know, like, maybe you, you lose, like... Yeah, this is just completely estimating, but, you know, maybe, like, 2% more games. You know, like, maybe, like, 1 out of 50 games, it will cause you to lose that you would not have lost otherwise kind of thing you know maybe that you know so not a ton you know especially if it's just one and it's not like your whole mana base yeah it's it's definitely worse but it's not it's not a huge deal on the grant in the grand scheme of things Anyway, we got playing base with the Twitch Prime sub. Y'all give some hype for our new sub. Thank you so much they're playing base. I appreciate that. Um, I don't yeah, I don't think there's any chance that any card is restricted in standard. Because yeah, I don't I can't I can't remember any card ever being restricted. And so I, I don't think there's going to be a restricted card at all. Okay, yeah, I didn't have the rares for the Shocklands. Yeah, so 
like the more the more lands you uh you know exchange the worse it gets because you know that just adds up But each each individual land is probably like one to two percent, you know, like one out of a hundred, one out of fifty to one out of a hundred games, it costs you, you know, like probably not a lot overall. But it can add up. Um, let's see. Question mark is you know attacking. With Paradise Druids, and yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. So it turns out this is not just a Nizza deck. Turns out this is a Teamer deck that we're playing against. Maybe our opponent sideboarded into Teamer. That could have happened. So they know about the Ambusher, not the Frilled Mystic. Yeah, I think I think so, Serventius. Uh, yeah, it was this list was a it was a donation deck that a viewer sent in, but um, yeah, people were saying that Martin Yuzo was playing it yesterday. So yeah, I think it's I think it's his list, or or the viewer sent it to Martin first, or I'm not sure, but yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked with these and been able to hold up both Ambusher and Frilled Mystic, but then my opponent doesn't really have any incentive to do anything. That Miskal disputes really nice. I wonder if they have if they have another counter spell also here. Yeah, that was a pretty awesome turn for my opponent there. Mystical Dispute and Ether Gust. Yeah, that's that's very unusual for 43% um, of a single deck. Now, like as far as like a, a metagame goes, like usually uh, like the best deck is like between 10 to 20%. When you get like more than 20%, that's that starts to be like where you're in the territory where you're like dominating the metagame when you get up to like 25%. So like 43% of, of course is just absurd. Um, uh, can you see the list before tomorrow? Now, that being said, it, this event is not like a regular, you know, it's not like a, a perfect showing of the metagame or like even like a normal like pro tour kind of thing where, 
Um, there's a lot of players. You know, it's only 68 players, so it's it's a really small pool. So a really a really small uh, number of of players like that can um, inflate percentages like that and can can cause um, stuff like that to happen, like where there's 40 percent. I grace you with my lack of presence. So there's the deck list. Um, there, it was made as you can tell. It was made on October third. And the person who made the deck said that they were kind of newer to Magic, also, and so they, they said they didn't think it would be a, a perfect list by any means, but wanted to see what could be improved and all that kind of stuff. All right, so at least I'll be able to sideboard better next time. So, like, Disdainful Stroke, if, you know, bring in Disdainful Stroke. Like, right now, we've just seen Explosion. Oh, I guess Wilderness Reclamation, duh. That's a, that's a really good card to Disdainful Stroke. Also. Obviously playing Niv Mizzet and then untapping seven lands is really nice. So I kind of needed to just top deck like another questing beast here. Yeah, this is this is likely game over. Quest failed. Okay, well, we found the, the questing beast. So we need, you know, this to trade with Niv Mizzet. Obviously, if my opponent has anything, we're dead. I don't really want to even play Nissa. I think Nissa is just kind of too expensive. Easy to counter and everything. Here are the Nissa. I'm going to get these disdainful strokes in here. Hey, Samantha.
Alright, let's see how this goes. So ideally we'll be able to resolve Ambusher on turn three, but hmm. Considering playing like the temple and then just using the food token there. Anyway, but the, you know, like I'm sure they have lava coils. Though also, so just simply getting ambusher to resolve. You know, like, we also need to dodge Lava Coil as well. But with them playing the Temple of Epiphany, I'm just going to not let it get... You know, I'm not going to wait till their end step and, you know, let them cast Quench or anything like that. Alright, well, this looks pretty good. They had nothing on turn three. Yeah, because like, if they just got counter magic now, they're just dead. Kind of needed lava coil. Oh, I was going to questing beast. Wow. That's an impressive finish there. Have nothing but turn for Wilderness Reclamation. Not going to be good enough. All right. Five win league. There we go. Got a bunch of gems, too. So Simic Semi-Flash. So they... So the person said that it's... You know, kind of like an an update to Simic Flash to give it more power to be able to go... Yeah, basically to, to add more power to the deck with having Gilded Goose and Oko and Questing Beast into like a Simic Flash type deck. Um, I liked it quite a bit. I'd have to say that the... Like the sideboard was pretty awesome with having like all those counter spells in the sideboard. Um... Yeah, that, that was definitely pretty awesome. Even against aggro, I liked our I liked our anti-aggro sideboard of Lovestruck Beast, Ambusher, Wicked Wolf there also. Um, honestly, the deck played really well. Not too much to complain about it. Brazen Borrower didn't look too great, but I mean that was kind of just like our our matchups and like how like what happened and everything like that. Daxter, thanks to the Twitch Prime sub there. Um, Pelt Collector also was, is, was, you know, pretty mediocre, but it's a one drop, you know, like you can't, can't expect too much from a one drop. It wasn't necessarily bad. You know, it was just, it was just mediocre. You know, it was just, it was fine. Um, the one crisis was awesome. Loved having the one crisis, especially with once upon a time, being able to find crisis and everything too. So yeah, the crisis was awesome. Nissa. I could certainly see not playing Nissa, but Nissa is another like powerful card that can just win games on its own. So, you know, having the one Nissa in there, perfectly fine. But I, I could also see not playing Nissa, and you know, like getting. I could definitely see like getting the other amb like Ambusher is just kind of good against everything. So I could definitely see playing, you know, like just playing for Ambusher in the main and not playing the Nissa and not playing like a bra like you know going down to like three Borrower and get rid of the Nissa and play two Ambusher. Whoops. Because, like, Ambusher is just a card that I want to bring in every single matchup. I understand not wanting to have, like, too many fours. But if you're cutting a five, a three, maybe you can maybe you can get away with it. Um, that gives you two sideboard slots. You know, I, I don't know exactly what you want to do with the sideboard slots there. Like, maybe you want Vela Summers kind of thing. Um... 
but let's see. All right, get back to our normal playlist. So like that's that's like another option. I mean, Ambusher is just so great. <laughs> it was just and it was so good for us also. Um, yeah, you could also also you could cut a preserver if you want to keep like the Brazen Borrower. You know, keep all four Brazen Borrowers so you have interaction. Or if you want to keep the Nissa, you know, Wildborn Preserver is another card that you can trim down on. It's it's another card that's that's fine. But you know, this this card's just an all star everywhere. And you know, we have the eight ways to ramp we have the once upon a time to help find those we were get, you know like have like we had the mana all the time for these and i just want ambushers like every game that's you know but there we go all right so that's simic semi flash so if you're watching the video later on youtube please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there and also check out the patreon page as well patreon.com slash todd stevens mtg um feel free to leave comments too I always like seeing the comments over there on YouTube. But thanks y'all for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.